Number one says, without calculating the solutions, determine whether each equation has real solutions or not. Um, so using these graphs provided. So this first one is the negative 0.5x squared plus 3x graph here. And so this one has us looking at when it's equal to zero. So here's the line y equals zero. So the number of times the graph crosses that line is the real solutions. So in this case, we have two real solutions. Um, the next one is our x squared minus 4x plus 7 graph. Again, this one is looking at where it's equal to zero. So where y equals zero. Um, and this doesn't cross that at all. So this is going to have two non-real solutions. Third one is 2x squared minus 2x minus 1. So this graph here, again, looking at when that equals 0. So at this y equals 0 line. So that's going to be two real solutions since the graph crosses it twice. Part D takes a look back at um, this first graph here and now asks when it equals three. So when this graph equals three, how many solutions are there um, and are they real or imaginary? So again, this crosses here. So this is going to have two real solutions. Next one um, goes back to the x squared minus 4x plus seven graph and looks at when it equals five. And so when y equals five, this, cross, this graph crosses that line twice. So this is gonna be two real solutions to that. And then when we go back to the 2x minus two, 2x squared minus 2x minus one graph at negative four, how many solutions are there? So this graph doesn't cross that one at all. So this is gonna be two non-real solutions. Number two, the graph shows the equation 2x squared plus 0.5x minus 4. Based on this graph, what number could you put in the box to create an equation that has no real solutions? Um, so you can kind of look here at the bottom of this. So this is kind of the bottom of where we would have real solutions because this would cross this line. Okay, this would cross the line twice. The graph crosses this line twice until we get here where it crosses once. So anything below negative two, you could put in this um, box and it would make a um, non-real solution. So if we put in negative three, that would be fine. Number three, the graph shows the equation y equals 1.5x squared minus 3x plus two. Without calculating the solutions, determine whether um, 1x, 1.5x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0 has real solutions. So equal to 0, that graph does not cross it. So this would be um, no real solutions. And then um, show how you would solve this. So if there's not real solutions, then the only way to solve it would be with um, using quadratic formula. I mean, I guess you could complete the square. Um, but let's do quadratic formula. So we would want A equals 1.5, B equals negative 3, and C equals 2. So we'll do that, that our solutions equal the opposite of B. So then this is going to be positive 3 plus or minus the square root of B squared. So negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times A at 1.5 times c at 2, and then divided by 2 times 1.5. So let's look at um, simplifying inside of that radical. So we have 3 plus or minus. The bottom is 2 times 1.5, which is 3. So let's look in here. So we've got 9. Um, four times negative four times 1.5 is going to be um, six. And then negative six times two is negative 12. So this whole thing here um, equals negative 12. So nine minus 12 is negative three, which is where the imaginary solution comes in. 
Um, and so then that would be our solution. If we wanted to write it in the form A plus um, BI, then we would say three divided by three is one, and then plus or minus. Now neg the square root of negative three is just I root three. So then we would have um, square root three over three I. Number four, write a quadratic equation that has two non-real solutions. How did you decide what equation to write? Um, and so, I mean, you can come up, there's a, a lot of different ways you could do this. So you could start by putting x squared equal to any negative number and just not have an x term. Now you could add that 10 back over and you could just say x squared plus 10 equals zero. Um, doesn't have any real solutions, okay? So anything x squared plus any constant number isn't going to have a real solution. You could look at, you know, doing a quadratic formula back backwards. So you could just pick a random b value. Let's say you wanted your b value to be negative 4. So the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So then in here, your b squared would be 16, minus four, now this has to get negative. So your A value and your C value have to multiply to give you a number bigger than um, 16. So we could do two times five here because then this is gonna give us minus 40 all over two times A and your A term is this. But so this told you your A was two, your B was negative four, so that the opposite of it is four and your C is five. So then you could say two X squared minus four X plus five will have imaginary solutions as well. So anything that would give you a B squared minus four AC that equals a negative number is gonna be fine to write in here. And then remember this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C when you go back and write your equation. Number five, find the solution or solutions for each equation. So we have um, decimals in kind of all of these. So let's do quadratic formula for them. So let's subtract 2.5 um, over so that we can get it to um, the same side here. And actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bring this term over because I don't like my A term to be negative. So I'm actually going to add 2x squared to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So then this is going to be 0 equals, and then I'm going to have 2x squared minus 2x and then plus 2.5, just because I don't like my a value to be negative. So now we'll do quadratic formula for this. So x equals the opposite of b. So your b is negative 2. So this is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4ac. And then all over 2 times a. So then simplify within that radical. So x equals 2 um, plus or minus. And then let's do the um, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 times 2.5 is 20, um, is negative 20. So this is going to be 4 minus 20 here. And so that's going to be the um, square root of negative 16 and then divided by two. So we have two plus or minus, square root of negative 16 is four i divided by two. So we get x equals one plus or minus two i for part a. Part b, um, so this is already all equal to zero. So we've got our a equals 4.5, our b equals three and our C equals one half. So we can just start plugging that into quadratic formula. 
So the opposite of B is negative 3, plus or minus. B squared is 9, minus 4 times 4.5, times 1 half, which is 0.5. And then all over 2 times 4.5. So then we'll start simplifying this. So we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus. And then if we do negative 4 times 4.5, that's negative 18 times 0. 0.5 is negative 9. So this whole thing right here is going to be 9 minus 9, which is 0. So we end up with square root of 0, which is just 0. And then 2 times 4.5 is 9. So this is just negative 3 plus and minus 0 is just negative 3. So negative 3 over 9 is negative 1 third for part B. Part C, we need to bring the 14 over. So we have 1 half x squared plus 5x. And then we'll add 14 to both sides. So we get 14 and then 0. So quadratic formula would give us um, the opposite of b. So negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times 1 half times 14. So a times c all over 2 times a, which is 1 half. So then this radical here, we've got 25 and then negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2 times 14 is negative 28. So inside the radical, we have 25 minus 28, which is negative 3. And then 2 times a half is 1. So for this one, we just end up with 5 plus or minus i square root of 3 since we've got a negative square root there and then divided by 1 so we wouldn't need to put that. So for part c, this would be our answer. Then d, I'm just going to rewrite down here since I'm running out of room. So we've got negative x squared minus 1.5x plus 5 equals 7. So we're going to need to um, bring the 7 over. Um, if we wanted, I again have this negative x squared term. Um, so let's see, let me bring the seven over and I'll show you a different way to make this positive. So we've got negative x squared minus 1.5 x, five minus seven is negative two equals zero. So again, I do not like when my a value is negative. Since we have an equation, we know we're allowed to multiply anything we want as long as we multiply it to both sides. So I'm just going to multiply everything by negative 1. So then this will be positive 1x squared, positive 1.5x, positive 2, and then 0 times negative 1 is just 0. So now we can do quadratic formula. So the opposite of b, so negative 1.5 plus or minus the square root of 1.5 squared, which is 2.25 and then minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2 times a. So we get negative 1.5 plus or minus. Now this inside the radical is going to be 2.5, 2.25, and then negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So 2.25 minus 8 is negative 5.75, and then we have all of that over 2. Um, so then we would get x equals negative 1.5 plus or minus i square root of 5.75 um, over 2. So you could probably leave it if you want to just divide the negative 1.5 by 2, that's going to be um, negative 0.75. And then you could do, um, just put this square root 5.75 divided by 2. 
and then with an I. But either way, I think is fine. This this is probably a fine way to write your answer also. All right, number six says Elena and Kieran were trying to solve the equa this equation and they got different answers. Elena wrote this and Kieran wrote this. Are their answers equivalent and say how you know? Um, so I'm just going to manipulate this part over here and see if I can get it to equal Elena's. Um, so I'm going to ignore the one plus since that's the same in both. So I'm just going to look at this. So we have I times the square root of eight over four. Um, well, I know that that's equivalent to, um, the square root of four times two here because four times two is just eight. And the square root of four is just two. So I end up like this. Um, and so I, you know, in order for it to equal Elena's, we've got to cancel these kind of two and four out. And then this two also has to become a one half. So I could also look at this as, um, I times two, and then two is actually four times one half. So four times a half is two. So I haven't changed anything yet except for the look. And then the square root of four again is just two. So the square root of four is two. This one half is a decimal of 0.5. Two times two is four. Four divided by four is one. So I can get to this I square root of 0.5 by manipulating this part. So that must mean that these are equivalent expressions. So these answers are equivalent.